Other two colleagues could not be here, but I'm here to represent them, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about them. And what we're going to say in the next couple of minutes, I'll talk about the Scientific Advisory Board and some of the things that we're thinking about becoming involved in and working with forever over the next uh, number of years. And then I want to spend a little bit of time talking about the power of aloe. So if we think about our scientific advisory board, these are kind of uh, some additional pictures. Uh, Roger Clemens is uh, on your left. In the middle is Peter Pressman, and I'm on the other side. Uh, each of us have our own areas of expertise, but as we combine ourselves together, we've got about 120 years of experience uh, in our respective areas when we combine. Uh, Roger uh, is our expert in the area of nutrition, uh, Peter is our clinician, and I work in the area of safety, food safety, uh, and toxicology. Let me just give you a little detailed background of each of the three of us. Uh, the first is Roger Clemens, and Roger is a professor at the University of Southern California in the School of Pharmacology, uh, where he teaches uh, a number of different subjects, including uh, regulatory aspects of foods and nutritional supplements. He's the past president of the largest industrial food technology organization in the world, uh, some 20,000 members. Uh, he writes a monthly column in the uh, Journal of Food Technology, and he was just awarded by the uh, Institute of food, Nectolo food Technology with its uh, most recent and most prestigious award, uh, bringing together uh, nutrition, dietetics, and food science. He has a number of publications, and he is the uh, co-founder of our little consulting group called PolyScience, uh, which the three of us are part of. Peter Pressman uh, is a physician, but he's an, a research-oriented physician. Uh, he is a past flight surgeon, uh, spending time in Iraq and Afghanistan, uh, taking care of not just wounded Americans, uh, but others that unfortunately were hurt. Uh, he attended uh, medical school and then was an attending physician uh, at the Mount Sinai Center in Los Angeles. Again, a number of publications. And he is the director of medical operations in our little consulting firm. And then these are my credentials. I'm a research professor. Uh, at Michigan State University and the College of Public Health at the University of South Florida. One of the things that is unique about our groups, and I just pointed out here, I'm the past Secretary General, having served two terms as the Secretary General of the International Union of Toxicologists, some 20,000 toxicologists around the world. And the point here is that between the three of us, we have connections in probably every country that's recommended here. And if we don't have the answer to the question, we can turn to our colleagues uh, in these countries to help us. And you can see I've had some experience uh, as being past president of several organizations, a number of publications. But I guess the one that I would point out to you is that the, is I'm the editor of one of the two major textbooks in the field of toxicology. Uh, the book is some 1,700 pages long, so if you have trouble sleeping, uh, you might want to get a copy of that, uh, and that might help you go to sleep uh, in the evening. <laughs> I'm also a vice president uh, within our consulting firm. Now, let me spend just a little bit of time saying something about uh, what we are going to be doing as we begin to interact uh, with the management team, uh, with the uh, various uh, research and development, regulatory and quality people. One of the issues that we see out there now is that there is a uh, problem with people misunderstanding uh, aloe. And the reason there's that issue is because people have looked at 
a decolorized aloe and made some uh, untoward remarks about it. That is not the aloe that we use in our products. And as you saw earlier, uh, the company has its own aloe fields. They're well controlled. So we know exactly what's going into the aloe products. We're in the process of putting together a scientific peer-reviewed paper uh, that will set this issue to rest and one that you'll be able to point to uh, when you are asked about uh, this particular uh, aloe material. In conjunction with the uh, forever living, uh, we're beginning now to think in terms of providing scientific and medical evidence that's based on facts to share with the folks that have to respond to questions that are brought uh, to the company uh, that may be challenging and complex, uh, but that we'll be able to have better answers for you, uh, for the consumers, and even the press if we have to do that. We're also looking at the marketing and advertising copy uh, for the veracity of the claims. We want, when you have a claim on a forever living product, that the data are available to support that claim. And so you can be comfortable and confident that if a claim is made, the company has documentation uh, to support that claim. The other area that we're moving into and is going to be very important for you is to review all of the ingredients and the extracts that go into the various products that are sold uh, by Forever Living to be sure that we only put in those products that we understand, those ingredients in those products that we understand, we have an understanding of the amount that's there, and that they are going to be acceptable and safe to use under the conditions of that product. And we can do this through a number of ways, through uh, looking at uh, what's known as generally recognized as safe approach, or in the case of dietary ingredients. Uh, in the U.S., there's a process known as new uh, dietary ingredient reviews. We're also going to be working with the R&D folks uh, and the product development people to help identify novel and health-promoting components for possible innovative approaches uh, and marketing initiatives. And we'll be working with the laboratories, one of which you'll get to see here, uh, the one uh, that is in Texas. And I've also been fortunate enough to visit the one in the Netherlands to review their methodology, uh, their instrumentation, their quality control, to be sure that the things that uh, happen within our facilities are done properly, can be verified that they're drawn, done in the right way. Said I wanted to spend a minute about the power of aloe. And you saw in the first uh, talk by the president of the company, about that field of aloe, uh, and that's really what this company built its a reputation on, aloe. It's a wonderful product, but that, in my mind, is not the power of aloe. The power of aloe is out in this room. It's the people that represent the company. It's the people that are in Dallas, that are in Phoenix, that are in Scottsdale, that are in the Netherlands, and that are here in this audience. That is the power of aloe. Now, just some impressions uh, from uh, a couple of the facilities, one in the U.S. and one in the Netherlands, having gone through these very, very carefully. Uh, we asked questions. Uh, we told the people that were taking us through the tour, the plant manager, just step out of the room. We want to talk to the people that do the work and question them. And guess what? They were phenomenal. They are very, very good. They have high quality standards and they're dedicated to making the very best products 
in the safest possible way so that the products that you have are safe, effective, and that you can be proud of. Forever Nutraceutical, we went through them, and I think you're going to see that huge investment that management has put into this particular facility and also the other facilities. It's an ISO certified uh, facility, and what that means is it meets the toughest, the highest standards within the industry uh, to carry on the activities within that laboratory. They do high quality uh, standard and testing, and once again, uh, a very, very dedicated team. Let me just close by saying that Roger, Peter, and I have been in our respective fields right around 40, 35 years each. We've spent a lot of time developing a reputation. We're not going to do something that will cause us to lose our integrity and our reputation. And that's one of the reasons that when we were invited to come visit with the senior management of Forever Living, we discussed with them their philosophy, their reason for wanting us to come on, and having heard and discussed with them, we realized that they have the same integrity that we have. So we're proud to be part of this scientific advisory team and to be able to say to you, we will be working very, very diligently with the R&D, with the quality, with the regulatory people as we move forward, not just to celebrate the 40th anniversary, but maybe we'll be around for the 50th and hopefully for the 60th. Thank you very much.